Question 3. 3.1. Complete the full electron configuration of a chromium atom. Now, chromium has got an atomic number of 24, so it's got 24 electrons and 24 protons as well. But it does something slightly odd. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 isn't unusual. Then you might go to be tempted to put 4s2, 3d4, but what it does is it half fills its 3d shell by taking one of the electrons from the 4s. So filling up its 3d shell, and sorry, half filling its 3d shell and half filling its 4s shell makes it stable. So it takes one from the 4s and puts it into the 3d to half fill the 3d. Uh, question 3.2. An atom has two more protons and three more neutrons than an atom of 5224Cr. I know if it's got a, sim a symbol chromium, it's got a mass, uh, sorry, atomic number of 24. So if it's got an atomic number of 24, it's got 24 protons and 24 electrons because it's an atom, not an ion. Uh, but then what I can work out is from 24, 52 take away 24 is 28. So the remaining mass is 28. The only other uh, subatomic particle in there that has any mass is a neutron, so that's 28 neutrons, so it's 2428N. It says that it gets two more protons, so it's going to go up to 26 protons, and three more neutrons, so it's going to go up to 31 neutrons, so it's 3126 something. Now the bottom number, the atomic number, determines what atom it is, Never look up 26, that's Fe. A sample of chromium contains four isotopes and has a relative atomic mass of 52.09. The reason it's an odd number uh, is because it's an average of all of the isotopes. So now it shows the mass number and percentage abundance, that means how common it is, of three of these isotopes. We've got what, uh, an isotope mass number 52, 52. 3 and 54. Determine the percentage abundance of the fourth isotope. So there's a fourth isotope that I don't know anything about. One thing I can do is I can work out the percentage abundance. So if I add these all up, then uh, the missing amount, um, the missing percentage that is, so 100, subtract these three numbers here, H2.8, 10.9 and 2.7, will tell me the missing percentage of the final isotope, I don't know its mass. So 100, take away H2.8, take away 10.9, take away 2.7, I've got 3.6% of another isotope. So the calculation then, imagine you've got a hundred atoms, that's always a good step to start off with. So out of the hundred atoms, percentages is amount out of a hundred, H2.8 have got mass 52, 10.9 uh, particles, atoms out of the hundred have got mass 53. 2.7 of the particles out of the hundred have got mass 54 and 3.6 percent of the remaining uh, isotope. I don't know what its mass is um, and so I'm going to call it mass Y. So the total mass is 82.8 particles times 52, that's the mass of those, 10.9 particles of mass 53, multiply those two together, 2.7 times 54, that's the mass of those particles, and 3.6 particles out of the 100, I've got mass Y, 3.6 Y. The total mass is therefore, if I add everything up, it's 5,029.1 add 3.6y. That's the total mass. So an average is the total mass divided by the number of particles. And this way your 100 atoms comes in. So that's the total mass divided by 100 gives me the average. Now I know what the average is. It's 52.08. So 5,029.1 add 3.6y divided by 100, which is my average, equals... Um, 52.09 from here. Um, if I multiply both sides by 100, 5209 equals 5029.1 add 36y. Subtract 5029.1 from each side equals 3.6y. 3.6y is 179.9. Divide by 3.6, 49.97. Um, so that's the uh, mass number. Now all the other mass numbers are to two significant figures so I'm going to round it up to 50. So my massive ma missing mass number is 50. Deduce the oxidation state of chromium in Cr2072-. So a good reference point is oxygen. Oxygen in group 6 of the periodic table gains two electrons. Gaining two electrons it's got an oxidation state of minus 2.
That's a perfect reference point. So, 7 minus 2 is a minus 14. So the O's contribute, contribute minus 14. The two CRs must be plus 12, because 12 plus 12 minus 14 leaves the 2 minus left over. So the CR2, the two CRs, have got a combined oxidation state of plus 12, uh, so each chromium must be plus 6. Iodide ions can be oxidised to iodine using these uh, ions. To use a half equation, so a half equation is just part of the equation. It's always got electrons in there. So iodide ions are I minus, iodine is I2. Uh, I minus to I2, I'm going to need two I's, two I minuses to make the I2. And let's balance up the charges with electrons. Remember, half equations, you've always got electrons. Two minuses on the left, so I need two electrons on the right. Deduce the half equation for the conversion of acidic solution. That's a clue there, acidic solution. Um, uh, acids always have H pluses. So if you can't balance something, say for example Cr2 plus O72 minus to Cr3 plus, where are the O's going? Well the answer is you can always add H pluses and the acidic solution has kind of prompted you to that. You can always add H pluses and you can always make water H2O so that will always help you balance it. So I've got Cr072 minus. I'm adding some H pluses to the left hand side because the H pluses and the O's will make water which I've added to the right hand side. Now this looks complicated but it's not really. Um, forget about the electrons for now. Where's the 14 come from? Well Cr2 O72 minus plus H plus make uh, Cr3 plus it tells you that and H2O. I've got two CRs here so I need two CRs here. I've got seven O's, so I need seven H2O's. Seven H2's are 14 H's, 14 H pluses. Now let's add up the charges. I know it's a half equation, so I'm going to need electrons. Two minuses and 14 pluses leave 12 pluses on this side. Two uh, three pluses are six pluses on this side, so I've got 12 pluses on the left, only six pluses on the right. So six electrons will mean that I've got six pluses on each side. Use your uh, answers uh, to choose the overall redox equation. So what you do is to combine two redox equations, I have to balance the electrons. And to balance the electrons, when I add everything on the left of each equation and everything on the right of each equation, the two electrons must balance and cancel each other out. Now they're never going to balance because I've got six electrons in this one and two electrons in that one. So I'm going to multiply everything through by three on this top equation. So 2i minus becomes 6i minus, i2 becomes 3i2 and 2e minuses become 6e minus. Then I take everything from the left and everything from the right. So I've got 6i minus because I've multiplied this through by two by 3. Uh, Cr2 O72 minus 14 H pluses and 6 electrons. And then everything on the right I multiply this through by 3. So I've got 3i2, 6 electrons, 2 Cr3 pluses and seven waters, and now you can see why I've multiplied this through by three to get six electrons on the right hand side. The electrons cancel, and so uh, I, once my electrons cancel, I end up with a simplified equation like this.